Hey everybody, um, so I, uh, I scored a bunch of, um, of these Starship Troopers minis off of eBay. They, the game, the, uh, game has been out of print for a long time. It's, uh, it's a, it's a miniatures game and it's a good, you know, it's a good skirmish game. Um, it, I guess it is kind of an army game, but it's very much like the movie, like Starship Troopers. Um, but I just, I, I love the, uh, the arachnids, like, I think that they're so cool. Um, but I had a bunch of them, and I wanted to kind of bang out, I wanted to do, like, kind of an assembly line thing where, um, it's, it's one of those things that I've gotten into the habit of doing whenever I want to do, like, an army paint job, is that I'll, I'll do, like, a kind of like an assembly line thing where I'm doing one step and the next step and they all kind of come out looking the same and, and it's like efficient. <laughs> um, so I have some tips for you, some things that I like to do when I'm painting like horde armies. Um, like uh, say if you were if you were a Tyranid player in, uh, in 40k, that would be, that would, this this is videos for you. <laughs> um, but I, you know, I use like spray paints, dry brushing stuff, washes. Um, there's just like very, very stuff, I'm sorry, very, very little amounts of stuff that requires a fine brush. <laughs> you know, just some, some little spots at the end of the paint job. But most of it is like broader strokes where you're just kind of banging out big armies quickly um and sometimes you need to do that depending on who you who you want to play you have to bang out a big army and you have to just have like a system to do it so i have some some little tips and tricks that things that i like to do that make it a little easier i think all right So my first tip would be to do all of your scraping, you know, all of your seam line cleanup and uh, gap filling and all that stuff just in one pass. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I find this to be like the most tedious, least enjoyable part of the hobby. Like I really enjoy painting, I kind of go to my happy place. Like I, I kind of bliss out when I'm painting, but doing like scraping and gluing and I use like weird solvent based uh, glues that melt plastic and uh, gap filling stuff that has acetone in it that bonds to plastic and uh, it gives me a headache. So yeah, I like to just get it all done in one pass and uh, just one thing that I will say about that is that when you do these steps, when you do the gap filling and you do the seam line cleanup and then you um, put them aside and give them time to cure before you start messing with them again, like priming them and stuff like that, it's really going to improve the final product. Like uh, just not having those seam lines and not having the gaps that really stand out on the finished paint job, it makes a huge difference in the end. And uh, one other little pro tip uh, I'll, I'll give you about um, doing gap filling. Um, I love this stuff, this uh, Tamiya um, gap filling. It's like a, it's a plastic, plastic filler stuff. It, it, it's like has a toothpaste like consistency to it um, and you just like squeeze a little blob of it out of the tube it's already ready to go you don't have to like smush it together like you have to do with like milliputty and things like that uh, and then I just use a little like sculpting tool to um, put a little glob in there <clears throat> and um, this stuff does it, you can use it in a paintbrush and then it cleans up with mineral spirits 
and um, it just comes right off of a sculpting tool, like a silicone sculpting tool, like what I'm using right here. And it also thins with um, acetone or like a, a plastic glue. So you can make like a slurry, like a gap filling slurry, uh, or you know, a sprue goo with like plastic glue with that kind of stuff too. Cause it is, it's, it's an epoxy plastic glue or sorry, an, ep an, ep an epoxy plastic in a tube that just sort of dries and then it's, it's wonderful. It's, it does have a little bit of an odor though to it. So be forewarned. And spray paint. Um, so it has been like all about spray paint for me lately. There, uh, when it comes to priming, like doing base coating on things. Uh, like, don't get me wrong, I loved airbrush. I love my airbrush. But uh, as far as priming goes, um, I if there's one thing that, that will clog my airbrush, it's primer. Because primer is designed to stick to everything. And e even metal, like the inside of the airbrush, if there's, if if it's if it's a clog for me nine times out of ten it's primer and it just it makes it so much easier there are so many great options out there as far as spray paint goes for priming um and even base coating especially for like terrain pieces like big pieces of plastic if it's or like a um uh, a big piece of like plaster or e even like um XPS foam. I've, I've gotten more and more into uh, spray painting lately because it's so easy and quick and it's really easy to get good coverage fast on minis and or, or everything uh, and you just need to do it the right way and you will not gum up the detail on your minis. There is definitely a right way and a wrong way to prime minis with spray paint though. Um, so you need to hold the can back. Uh, you need to keep it away from what you're priming. And I recommend about a foot, like keeping it back uh, about like 10 to 12 inches away from whatever you're priming and then do uh, pulses. So just kind of tap on the, on the, uh, the nozzle and do uh, like a, a quick little burst. Don't flood the model with spray paint because that's how you're gonna lose all that detail from the sculpts. It's also been all about Rust-Oleum for me lately too. <laughs> um, so it's a uh, it's a cheaper alternative. Like it's it's not the cheapest spray paint out there but I do feel like it's one of the best. Um, <clears throat> the, the, the cans come with like high quality nozzles. They have really, really good coverage. The, the paint seems to sort of cure faster and it's less smelly. And um, they have some really nice colors that are just like ultra matte or um, they, you know, they what what they say on the bottle, on the you know, on the can, is what it actually is. Like they don't they don't say that it's a satin, and then it's a gloss, or they don't say that it's a flat or a matte black primer, and then it's like slightly glossy or whatever. It is what it says it is on the can. But uh, I'm also I'm gonna just do this um, base coat uh, on these guys, these little sand crawler guys and I'm using a kind of sand colored spray paint and everything is going to be sand colored but I am doing a kind of like a zenithal coat where I'm spraying from above at sort of a 45 degree angle in uh, in all directions and uh, they're they're gonna look all like sand at first with some shadows but uh, that's just going to be like the base coat and then it's going to develop later as the paint job goes on.
So you can see that everybody looks like sand at this point, but that's that's totally cool. That's the look that I'm going for. I want them to look like they have a little bit of natural camouflage um, that they just kind of blend in with their environment. I was kind of like looking at uh, camel spiders. I was sort of wanted to give them like a, a camel spider kind of looking paint job. And they're, they're just, they're huge spiders. They can get like, I don't know, like a foot long or some crazy thing, but they, um, they have a little bit of natural camouflage. And, um, so first up what I wanted to do, and you know, like at this point it's very abstract, like the, they're just there, you have like that basic tone all over like the sand. So I want to start differentiating their bodies from the bases, the sand that's on the bases. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw just a, a wash on top of everything. I'm just using Irax Earthshade. Um, and I'm, you know, using a big brush, a good size brush. This is another thing that you're gonna hear me talk about a lot, is using the right brush for the job. Um, and then I'm just dumping it on all over. So, you know, it's at this point, it's like when you're in, when you're beginning, don't use tiny brushes, <laughs> use, use big brushes and dump thus dump paint on or dump, you know, washes on, use like a spray paint can or something to get the broad strokes done and then go in later with the fine detail brushes. But this is just slopping some color on. And uh, painting dark to light. <laughs> so um, you'll you know you you'll notice that if you watch my videos, you'll notice that I pretty much always start with like a, a coat of black, and uh, and then I work my way up to the highest highlights. And there's a reason why why I do that. Um, and it, it well it comes from my my background doing uh like commercial art in my you know my training in art school and stuff like that um typically with acrylic paints you want to start with your darkest colors first oil paints and, and acrylics um you want to start with your darkest colors first and uh and then you want to put opaque uh layers of lighter colors on top of that so you start with your shadows and you start kind of abstract and then you you work your way up to your highest highlights and you, and you work your way up to the detail. Um, like uh, whether that's the, the sunlight or like, you know, like claws, like some kind of shiny thing like glinting off of the upper part of the carapace or something like that. You, you, you really want to get like the broader strokes done first and start with your darkest colors first and then work your way up to the lightest lights. And typically on minis, those very lightest highlights are gonna be on the very tippy tops of the models. They're gonna be on things like uh, weapons or you know teeth and claws and, and faces and they, they, we call those focal points in, um, in uh, like commercial art and, and fine art. It's where you're sort of drawing the eye in. You're drawing attention into a specific spot with, with the, your use of a highlight. So I, I always do my darkest colors first and then I work my way up to my lightest colors, but I'm doing the broad strokes with just a, a makeup brush, a big chunky makeup brush. You know, there's there's no small brushes out here yet. And they won't come out until I'm ready to do the fine details. So at this point, I've got my kind of broader look for, uh, for these guys, like how I want them to look. Um, <clears throat> and you know, like the basic tones are done. So now I'm going to start coming in and like refining things. Um, <clears throat> they looked a little bit too, just still too much like sand to me. So I wanted to give them a little bit of a flesh wash just to put some like pink back into them. 
and uh, so I am I am using reference, but this is kind of just me like doing things that changing things on the fly because I want them to look a little bit different. You know, I want them to look like little albino kind of maggots. So I want to put a little bit of pink back into them and I'm going to give them little beady red eyes later. So, uh, you know, I want some of that kind of blood to show through their little uh, carapace. And, but, you know, again, like using a big brush, like this, this brush is actually, um, this is a watercolor brush. And um, it's, uh, it's just a, a, a paint dumper. You know, it's like a big, big brush, it holds a lot of paint. And uh, because it's a watercolor brush, it's um, it's just good for slopping on uh, washes. <laughs> and you know, don't don't use your tiny, teeny tiny brushes to do washes. Don't do your te your teeny tiny brushes to do like dry brushing and things like that. Like use big chunky brushes. Um, but yeah, so just gonna add some more color back in there and make them look a little less sandy and a little bit more uh, fleshy. So I am gonna kind of break my own rule here about using big chunky brushes to do dry brushing. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I wanna come in and I wanna get the little sand on the base and then just do some highlights to make the sand kind of pop out. So I'm using a sand color. And uh, I'm gonna use a small flat. Um, so a flat is just, it's a, it's a brush that has like a flat tip on it sort of like a rectangular tip or a slightly, maybe even like a filbert. A filbert has like a sort of a flat but slightly rounded tip on the front of it. But the only reason why I'm not using a big chunky brush is because I need to get into little places and uh, go in the direction that the light's hitting. So like I, I like to use flats to um, when I'm doing dry brushing, if I want to come in the direction where the light is hitting. Like if I'm doing minis, I'll usually use like a, a, a makeup brush to do like kind of circles. But then sometimes uh, a flat comes in handy because you sort of just pull it down in the direction that the light is hitting. And then it's easier to do a dry brush with, um, with a flat when you're coming down in one direction. So uh, to do the beady little eyes, I'm just going to use contrast paint. And um, the, the contrast paint is, it's, it doesn't have good coverage. You know, like you, you know what, the, you probably know what the contrast paint does. It settles in the cracks and then it makes some, some highlights and some shadows on its own. Um, so I'm just going to use the, the highlights that I already put in with the, the, the rattle cans and the dry brush and just gonna go over that and just kind of use it like a filter to, uh, to turn those colors red, just to, to put those directly over the eyes because I don't feel like painting a ton of eyes on these little guys. And, you know, like, th th personally, I don't like painting shaft as much. <laughs> I like painting like the big cool pieces or like characters um, like stuff like this where it's just a big horde army and then they're gonna hit, get hit by some blast weapon or something and you just wipe half of them off the table. Uh, it's, it's not as much fun to paint a whole ton of eyes on them. So things like this where you can just cut a few corners, it, it makes a difference, you know, it, it makes the painting more enjoyable to me, I think. So uh, now I'm just going to go ahead and do the rims of the bases on these guys. And um, I always, I, I like to do some kind of color on the rims of my bases, but um, I prefer to just paint stuff out of the pot and then use something that has good coverage and you know good um, good flow like kind of self levels or something and 
so I, I usually use, or I pretty much always use P3 Tamar Black because it's just, it's a really, really, um, uh, it's, it has really, really good coverage and then it, it um, self levels pretty well and like you can't see the, the brush strokes and things like that. And this is another thing where I like to use the, the flat, um, but I'll just sort of turn like the, uh, the mini around in my fingers and then put the, um, <clears throat> put paint on using a flat and just kind of getting the edges with it. But one thing that I like about, about this is that I don't have to do like multiple, multiple coats to, uh, to get good coverage. You know, it's just like straight out of the pot, one and done kind of thing where you might have to come back and cover up a few spots, but not really. So now that I've got my shaft army out of the way, got all of the cannon fodder done, now I get to work on the really cool uh, big, big bugs. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it does kind of feel like, like having my dessert after <laughs> eating my vegetables in a, in a little, you know, sort of. Like uh, I, I could come back and work on those other ones later, but this is the, this is the really fun part for me is painting like the really cool models. Uh, so I, you know, I am going to airbrush. I, I could not bring myself to touch these guys with uh, with any other spray paint besides just priming them. But but I am gonna leave some of that primer showing. That that black is, um, it's a good color. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, I'm just gonna start putting in other color on top of the black, but there's areas that are just gonna be left that nice black primer. Um, so yeah, I am gonna use my airbrush and I'm thinning things down the, um, when I airbrush, um, I like to thin paint down to about milk consistency, uh, maybe like 2%, you know, or skim milk before I actually put it through the airbrush. And, uh, and, and also I'm gonna use some, uh, some reference. So I am, I am looking at a reference while I'm doing this too. So, uh, yeah, but, this is the fun part for me. So I'm going to break my own rule again about working dark to light. <laughs> uh, but that's because I want to cover up uh, any overspray that I might have put on with the light orange kind of color. And uh, I want the upper body of these guys to sort of look more grayish in the sun. Like I want the, the bodies to look like a, a dark color, like black, but then the upper carapace is gonna get that treatment to make it look like uh, highlights. And then I'm gonna do some dry brushing on top of that. But you know, again, like right tool for the job, this is this is the broad strokes and doing um doing the airbrush is, it's going to give a much smoother finish than a dry brush and um it's just easier to you know for doing like big um big patches of color and uh, and then you know getting areas where it's like the light is coming down so i'm just going to spray it directly from above and then kind of cover up any spots where I have a little bit of overspray. But, uh, I, I, you know, it's nice to just have that color just ready to go, especially when you're painting like a whole army. It's nice to just have like a recipe book where it's like this color and then this color and then this color, and, uh, and then just going through everybody like an assembly line. And uh, I'm just gonna do some more uh, dry brushing to pick out those highlights. Nothing really too, too complicated about this paint job, but you know, like I, I really like how these guys look. Like I love the models and um, 
know, sometimes you do need to just stop though. Like just just look at <laughs> look at what you're doing and be be like, okay, I need to stop here because if I keep going, it's just gonna get turn into a, like an overly complicated mess. Um, and then if you, if you're curious, if you see this this stuff, this um, this is a uh, this is MDF. So I'm, I, I always have MDF lying around. Um, I, just, I just like it, I use it for all kinds of things. I, I do laser cutting, I do, you know, I do like fine art paintings on the stuff and like make terrain out of it. So I just always have MDF lying around. So I like to, uh, I'll use it to, to dry brush too. And just like take some of that paint off and when, and use like a makeup brush or something to um, to do a dry brush, but I'll just put the paint right on there, and then um, you know get the get the dry brush where I want it, and yeah. But uh, but you could use like something like cardboard too. I should probably use cardboard. <laughs> There's plenty of cardboard lying around too. I just uh, I just love MDF. So after I've got those broader strokes done, you know, again, like airbrush and dry brush and just kind of getting the, the, the big parts done, then I'm going to come in there with, uh, with a small brush and, uh, and because I want good coverage, then I'm just going to paint straight out of the pot. And uh, this is just another one of those things where it's like, it's time consuming to set up like the wet palette or set up like an actual palette when you can just kind of grab some right out of the pot and then paint it right on there. And um, I really like P3 paints. They, they, they have really excellent coverage. So they're great for doing stuff like this where you just want to put that little pop of color on something. And uh, they also they also wet blend really well. So. Um, but, uh, but for, as far as like painting straight out of the pot, um, P3, it's, it's, it's really nice. And next I'm gonna take everything outside and I'm gonna seal it down. And uh, I'm using a Testers. So uh, Testers makes a dull coat lacquer that will actually dull down the, the finish of your paint job, and it's not gloss. They make a, a clear coat, and that's what I'm using, but the clear coat is not exactly clear. It's more of like a satin finish. But you know, for bug carapace, it's, it, it works perfectly fine. I don't hate the idea of having a slightly glossy finish on a, uh, you know, a, a bug's exoskeleton. So, but yeah, know what your, um, know what your, your dull coat does or your top coat does. So you can see here kind of, well, the finished, the finished army, but you can also kind of see how they have that little bit of gloss on them. Um, yeah. But anyways, yeah, thanks for watching guys. Um, I plan on using these in a uh, Stargrave narrative campaign that I want to play with my friends. And uh, I always wanted a bug army. So, yeah. Alright, take care. I'll see you in the next one.